Alright guys, what's up? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to map a endless rotary encoder on your MIDI controller uh, to some of the various things in Scratch Live. Now, uh, endless rotary encoders work a little bit differently in Scratch Live. So, uh, we're going to take a look at my MIDI controller right here. This is the Allen & Heath Zone 1D. And it has uh, various knobs, uh, absolute knobs, faders, buttons, jog wheel, etc. Uh, in particular, these knobs up here, these are endless rotaries. So, uh, in comparison to these knobs, these two row knobs right here, these are absolute, and that means they have you know, finite uh, beginning and ends, and you can only turn them so far. Uh, they're basically like the EQ knobs on your mixer. Uh, these guys at the top, though, these scroll uh, indefinitely and don't have uh, endpoints, so that's why they call them endless rotaries, because you can just keep turning them and turning them and turning them. Uh, however, though, if you want to map these in Scratch Live to, say, like the uh, the auto loop length scrolling, or if you want to scroll through your uh, track listing in your crates, uh, you have to uh, map it a little bit differently. It's still pretty much the same process. You just have to uh, uh, hit a different key after you map it. So let's take a look at it because uh, it's really simple. Uh, so we need to go into MIDI mapping mode first of all, as always. So let's say I wanted to map the library scrolling, uh, which I already have, but let's uh, redo it. So let's say I want to uh, map this knob right up here. I'm going to turn that. So it's going to turn green, though. However, you notice it's going to say, well, let me go back up there, uh, I can't move my mouse, but if you read, it says right under channel 16 CC 32, it says absolute. Uh, by default, when you MIDI map something it, uh, in Scratch Live, it defaults to absolute encoders. Uh, this is obviously not an absolute encoder. Now, if we actually try to move that knob, you'll see it kind of scrolls through the list, but it's all jerky and jumpy, and it doesn't really work too well. Uh, so we need to change this to relative encoding. Now all you have to do to hit uh, do that is just press the C key on your keyboard. That is the C key, uh, which is uh, in between the X and the V key. So uh, when we hit the C key, you're going to see it changes now to uh, relative sign bits. That's uh, just a different kind of option, uh, and you can see it works like that. Uh, however, this is, doesn't appear to be working. This is not a sign bit. Uh, uh, relative encoder. It works for scrolling down, but when I scroll up, it jumps all the way back up to the top, so we don't want that one either. So we're going to hit C again, and that will be a uh, binary offset, and I believe this is the correct one that we want to use. Actually, no, it's not. Uh, this one is basically, it jumps to the uh, top and end of the list, so we don't want that one either. So uh, hit C one more time, and that will change it to two complements, uh, whatever that means, but uh, I believe, there we go, this is the one we want right here, and that will scroll uh, through the track listing like so. Uh, so if you have a relative encoder or endless rotaries on your uh, MIDI controller, make sure after you map it that you hit the C key, and you could probably want to try out each of the uh, uh, different options for the relative encoders on off. I think that just is going to, uh, this one actually, yeah, this one just scrolls up, and you can't scroll down. So if you have relative uh, encoders, on your MIDI controller. Uh, make sure you toggle with the C key between all the different types of relative encoder modes in Scratch Live. Uh, once again, there's sign bit, binary offset, uh, twos complement, and on off. So make sure you try them all and figure out which one uh, works because, uh, again, all MIDI controllers are different. Uh, so just make sure you test them out which one uh, that uh, works for you. I believe which one worked for me. Uh, twos complement. I think that was it. Yep, and that's the one I wanted to use right there. And again, if you want to map something else to uh, rotary encoders, say the auto loop uh, sc scroll knob, uh, let's map this one like so. Uh, again, so as you can see, the defaults to absolute. We need to change it uh, to two's complement, which is this controller's mode. And you can see it's scrolling through the auto loop links now on the left deck, uh, like so. Well, of course, you know, easier would be just to use the absolute encoder. Uh, those seem to work better, but if you have a rotary encoder or endless rotary knobs on your MIDI controller, make sure you hit the C key after you MIDI assign it while the box is still green uh, to change between the different relative encoding modes.